Hi everyone, this is our first YouTube video. Uh, we are Kat and Brad of West Bay Handmade in Traverse City, Michigan. So I guess we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about how we started our company, how we opened our first brick and mortar store and all that good stuff. We opened almost a year ago just on the street from our current location and we always talked about having a YouTube channel and recording our process. Um, Brad has another YouTube channel. What is the name? Brad Richardson. It's Brad Richardson, <laughs> but it's of his um, knife making company. So Brad's a bladesmith. We want to kind of take what Brad's built there, expand on why he hasn't been um, shooting for his other page and show kind of what we're doing here in Traverse City. It's just kind of fun to see the process of a business grow or somebody create something from scratch. And it, it'll be cool for other people to see, but it'll be cool for us to look back and be able to, to see what we've achieved and be able to look back and see, see the mistakes we've made, see the successes we've had and all that good stuff. So we'll share a little bit about what we've done in the last year and hopefully from here for, going forward, we can video kind of the changes that are happening here and show some of our makers and some of our day-to-day -day stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into our first video. We're going to be talking about starting a brick and mortar store. So when you're first starting a brick and mortar store, you need to figure out what your business plan is, what your store is gonna be about. So do you wanna kinda of elaborate on that? I guess, figure out like why we started doing what we were doing. Um, we moved up here about two years ago and my background's in luxury retail management and sales and I took me almost half a year to find a job that I was okay with working. Um, there's not really a lot of larger retail brands in this area. It's a lot of smaller uh, mom and pop businesses, which we of course love, but we were having a really hard time finding places to sell the products that we already made and places to work. So we started our store kind of on a whim. Do you want to tell them how you found our old space? We found our first space on Craigslist and, uh, it, what was it like 300 square feet it was really small. It, it was a it was small not, yeah. small space and it was in a basement yeah so um our first location was just down the street from where we are now in a lower level basement no windows it was kind of scary when we took it um but brad found it i don't know it was like kind of last second he's like we're gonna go check out this space and i was so hesitant because i didn't know how, you know we're in a new town didn't know how things were gonna go but we took the space and we grew every single month that we were there. Um, we did renovations for almost two months before we even opened to really make the space look like our own. We signed the lease in May and mm -hmm. uh, our city here does this big event called Cherry Festival. It brings in a lot of tourism. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be, be sure that we could be open for that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of when we opened. We, we signed the lease in May and we, we opened in June. End of June. End of June. Mm -hmm. But uh, the landlord had three spaces available in the basement, and he owns an arcade up above. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, I guess, a, an arcade bar. It's it's an adult arcade, but it's 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 a really cool place. And below there was I think four four spaces four spaces, and there was a, a clothing store, and all the other three spaces were available just around the same time. So every month that we were in business, we expanded into the next space, busted down some walls continued to grow and uh, from there we just needed more space but we decided to fill our space with local art we knew that we couldn't fill it all with our own product mm -hmm. but um that's not the reason we wanted a store we wanted to be able to kind of collaborate with other people and mm -hmm. create more of an artistic uh community like mm -hmm. around our store yeah there's like maybe one other store in the area that has um, like rented booth spaces where people can make their own product or resell like refurbished furniture and that wasn't really our style um, and being that they were the only space they had about a two-year wait list when we reached out to sell our products with them so we knew that we didn't want to wait and that we had something that was going to be bigger than just a booth in another store yeah it's hard to find stores here that mm -hmm. that want to take your product um or I guess. Especially from, well, we're not even from here. We're not from here originally. No one We've, no, knew us. So. How long did we live here before we before we opened our first store? We moved up Just here. Just under a like year. Like 4th of like July. 10 and, months. Yeah, yeah, like 10 months. And we had been looking since we moved for a store, and we couldn't find anything. 
Um, we met with a few realtors to look at some larger spaces, but of course anything that we thought was kind of in budget was, I mean, just awful. Mm-hmm. Remember that old space? Yeah, there, there's completely run down. a lot of like uh, rough buildings mm-hmm. <laughs> for our budget. And um, I don't know if we want to talk about like what we what we paid or anything, but it's it's what we paid for our first store was a lot less than what we're paying for the mm-hmm. store now and we were terrified, terrified. to take on oh. that that monthly payment yeah terrifying. and then every time we busted down a wall to expand like we started with 300 square feet we ended with 800 i don't know 800 plus the back plus room. plus a whole back room yeah. that we were actually um teaching classes out of mm-hmm. and using as a workspace but uh every time we busted down a wall or did a renovation we added a, a good chunk of money <laughs> To our monthly, but um, and we we yeah. just kind of we grew so fast. Um, right now we have about 110 people that sell in our store. Um, not that everyone sells at the same time. Someone might only have a few pieces in the shop, but um, you know, from that little tiny 300 square foot space where we were just kind of going solo to where we are now, there's been a lot that's happened in the last mm-hmm. year. Yeah, there's been a lot. So um. Some of the struggles with um, starting with uh, a low budget, like pretty much nothing, and um, and creating a, a cool store was that we had to do a lot of the work ourselves. All of it. All of the work ourselves. <laughs> All of it ourselves. Like, <laughs> with the first store, we didn't contract a single thing. We did everything ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we had to put a lot of work into it because we had to make the basement not scary. Yeah. I mean, people, oh, yeah. we ha- uh, we, I want a young lady to feel comfortable coming down into by a herself. basement store by herself yeah. without, we, I don't know. Feeling <laughs> awkward. We had a kid come down once and he was like, mommy, I'm scared. From, and we heard it echo down the hallway and I'm like, oh my God. It was a, it was a lot of experimenting <laughs> oh. with lighting and bright colors on and the walls. plants, keeping plants alive in a basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which was difficult. But mm-hmm. yeah, it was fun though. Um, definitely some good memories. Um a great way to start great way to start great way to start we wouldn't be able to to just start with the store that we're in now like off the bat unless Mm -hmm. we i don't know we would have had to have gotten a big a big loan a huge loan there's there's no way there's no way yeah so when we first took our original location Catherine was working full-time i was working full-time in the workshop with the knife business and we didn't we were, I guess, trying to figure out time management at that point. Mm-hmm. I was trying to spend time earning some extra money to help cover the store, but mm-hmm. also I had to be there to do all the renovations mm-hmm. because we couldn't afford to have anybody do the renovations. Yeah, and I don't know, being like a new store owner, I kept my full-time job for about four or five months after we opened. Which was hard for you because it was your, really hard. her background is the whole retail side. Like mm-hmm. you are the are the face of the company. Mm-hmm. You're the one that needs to be here in front of the customers because I don't have any of that experience. <laughs> but I kind of held my own and was kind of forced mm-hmm. to learn how to do the barcodes and the inventory and all that mm-hmm. and kind of keep on top of stuff. But we had to do that at the time so that we had a steady paycheck and it's really hard when you're working i think we were working like 80 to 90 hours a week between Mm -hmm. yeah both of us having our own full-time jobs and then opening the store because we knew that the store would be our priority in the future it took a lot of time Mm -hmm. um it was really really difficult we did i don't think we turned our like stove on at home for like four months (laughs) yeah it was four months yeah we we didn't didn't cook cook at home (laughs) we we didn't have time to do any of that Mm -mm. we sunk everything we had into the store yeah every dollar just to get started and it was it was a tiny little basement store but that's what it took to to build the connections and to create Mm -hmm. a comfortable environment yeah and i don't know create like a a memorable platform I don't know we'll create a name name. for ourselves in a town where no one knows you and uh, start to build relationships with our vendors and had we not had that little basement store um, we wouldn't have met some of our greatest friends here Mm. in town no some of uh, some of our best friends were our our first vendors in our old store and uh, we it's it's been a We've taken a lot more out of starting this business than we had expected, yeah. and it's it's definitely been, it's had its ups and downs, but overall it's been incredible. Yeah, we're still surprised that people wanted to sell with us in a basement shop when they had the option to go to other stores in town, but they might have been kind of in the same position that we were, where they couldn't find somewhere to sell, and they just needed a place that would highlight their creativity. 
and we were really we've always been really picky on who we brought in as a vendor and uh, I'm really glad that we have made the connections that we have in the last year yeah we've been really selective mm-hmm. we want to make sure that we have a good bunch of people working with us people that we're comfortable with people that actually make their own products that are quality and uh, yeah show craftsmanship so let's go ahead and just talk about what our business is all about what this store is in the first place our store is a collection of local artists and makers Um, we have i think i mentioned about 110 local people that sell in our store currently and it's anything from you know artwork prints to paintings to you know Dish towels, it's it's everything we've got. Furniture, clothing, leather work, there's pottery, a ton of stuff. Candles, I mean, we've got basically every... We hit a, a pretty large spectrum, yeah. Yeah, so I would call our store um, a good collection of home decor. Um, but it's for us, it's been really, really nice being able to work with our locals kind of one-on-one we get to hand select everyone that's in the store um, basically who's representing the company Um, we get to display everything ourselves so it feels more of like a boutique instead of like um, booth spaces yeah it doesn't feel like when you walk in it doesn't feel like you're in like an artisan market even though that's kind of what our bread and butter is you walk in and it feels like it's a boutique and we're highlighting all of our local artists. So it's really nice for our makers that they get to bounce ideas off us and see if it's something we'd be interested in carrying, um, giving them a lot of creative control over what they're bringing into the store. And then we do make a lot of our products ourselves as well. So we do screen printing, um, we make candles, we have an apothecary line, and then Brad, of course, being a furniture builder and knife maker, everything in our store was built uh, with our own hands <laughs> all the displays uh the shelving and the tables we've been able to do all that mm-hmm. ourselves um in our new store and in our old store mm-hmm. so that's saved us a ton of money yeah. uh i mean store displays are are really expensive they're so, and i had no idea so expensive like thousands of dollars could, for tables it's crazy yeah you could spend five grand on just one big shelving unit mm-hmm. five thousand dollars <throat> we opened in our first location last summer and we live in a really touristy area. So Traverse City is the cherry capital of the world. Um, we have the National Cherry Festival end of June, uh, first week of July. So it goes over July 4th. And then in August, we've got Film Festival and the downtown does Friday Night Live. So every Friday they shut down the main road. There's tons of things to do um, in the streets. All the stores will have outdoor like pop-ups and uh, Traverse City has been on a lot of lists for best place to vacation in the United States or in the Midwest. Um, We live on Lake Michigan, so um, there's the West Bay that our store is actually on where we get our name um, directly across from us. And then there's the East Bay of Lake Michigan that's just like a mile down the road. So if you've ever seen like the pure Michigan uh, commercials or billboards, Mm -hmm. it's always Traverse City. It's a lot of times directed (laughs) towards the Traverse City area. Mm -hmm. So our first summer of business was tons of fun. It was really interesting. Mm -hmm. We had some ups and downs, obviously an influx of foot traffic during all of the events like Cherry Fest Mm -hmm. and Film Fest. But uh, we did have to work really hard to get traffic down into the basement. I remember days that Kat would be up handing out flyers, trying to tell people to go down into the basement, check out our store. Which is painfully awkward when no one wants to talk to you. On like a 90 degree day running around saying, hey, hey, come on, come on in our store. And you also like, you can't try to get people that have strollers or wheelchairs or crutches or or anything like that. Pets. Like people don't want to try to get that stuff down into the basement. Mm -hmm. Uh, We had one person one time (laughs) leave her crutches upstairs and she like hopped downstairs. Yeah, she jumped down the stairs and threw our whole store because she said that she was dying to come in and she wasn't going to let it. It's really, it's really sweet of her. I felt so bad though. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Some of our methods of making our store really pop from the outside were balloons, uh, chalkboard, like pop-up signs that Catherine does. Yeah, we had about six signs outside pointing people into the direction of our store. Um, Being in a basement shop and not having windows, it's really easy to walk by when all you see is a door with a logo. 
And then we also had our custom sign that we we built. Mm -hmm. We welded up a big steel frame and put some wood slatting in there and actually had one of our vendors cut out our, our name in uh, with, with our CNC machine. Mm -hmm. So we kind of painted it and got it all looking good and hung it up on the building. And we noticed that it wasn't really... People would say that they couldn't find us still. And even though we had a giant sign that had our name, balloons, all these chalkboard signs, um, people would call us saying, hey, where are you? And they'd be right <laughs> outside our door. So we had to go back and paint the sign a brighter color so you could see it from down the street. We added more contrast mm -hmm. so the letters popped a little bit more. And we noticed that that helped a lot. But uh, mm -hmm. it was a lot of like back and forth, a lot of trial and error. We mm -hmm. went back to change a lot of things. We kept trying new things mm -hmm. but uh i mean we also we reached out to all the local magazines the newspaper yeah. we ended up having a live news segment which was a ton of fun it was really nerve-wracking like but four hours so every half hour from like 5 45 in the morning till 9 we would be on air for five minutes and we we were up like really late the night before we, we must have <laughs> been there the store ready? till like four in the morning it, no no no, two? no maybe two, two like one or two and they were there at Five. And they were there at five, yeah. so we had right. to be there a little bit before then. But we, we were exhausted, <laughs> so you could so really tired. see it in our eyes, like in the video. Oh my gosh. But uh, that was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We did a lot of advertising on Instagram and Facebook. So not only did we try to focus on social media a lot, we did a bunch of paid advertising so that people would start to recognize our name, and we targeted. Um, the general Traverse City, Grand Traverse County area um, online so that they could find us. Yeah. Yeah, we mm -hmm. had uh, we had tons of shirts printed that we sold for like 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. We had uh, tote bags and uh, stickers, and we did everything we could to try to get our logo and our mm -hmm. name out into the community. And we did a bunch of giveaways to help promote the store a little bit too. Tons of giveaways. Mm -hmm. We created events, Facebook events, to, to drive traffic. Anytime... There was any sort of holiday mm -hmm. or something going on downtown, whether it was like a local art walk or something, we mm -hmm. always did whatever we could to try to make our store a part of that. We and hung, uh, hung flyers up. We framed a giant grand opening poster <laughs> and mm. we tied it to <laughs> our stairs outside to just so people could see it when they were driving by. So there was just this gigantic poster framed yeah. on like the windiest day of the whole year i swear we didn't want to shell out the money for the waterproof or like laminated poster yeah. so we put it in this plastic frame and we tied <laughs> it and it still had some water damage but it worked yeah yeah it yeah. worked it, it was big and bold and it was enough just for people to know that we were there so yeah it, it was fun starting in the basement store i'm really happy mm -hmm. to be out of the basement store it's nice to, to have some big windows and all that, the but windows are great. we'll get into an actual video about our new store uh, pretty soon here. So for any of you who are interested in opening a, a brick and mortar store, maybe you have an online business and you're ready to, to throw it onto the streets a little bit and you see like a basement store or something that's not in really the best of shape, don't lose all hope because that kind of got us to where we are now. And the public likes to see that transformation mm -hmm. process we got a lot of good, awesome feedback mm -hmm. on our renovations, all the videos and yeah. pictures we posted. We were the underdogs. You know? yeah. We were the people that kind of built up from nothing. And I think if we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have as much recognition as we do today. And uh, it was even more exciting when we opened our larger location that we have now because people already knew us. People were really, really excited for yeah. us. Yeah, and it was cool so, you know, having people that maybe had come in once or twice come up to us again and say, wow, I'm so happy for you guys Like, to see how much you've grown. And then for us too, to look back and say, wow, we grew so fast. And if we hadn't taken that first leap, which was so scary, um, we wouldn't have anything that we have today. So I'm really, really grateful for the basement shop. Yeah, there's definitely been a lot of a lot of risks that, that we've kind of- uh, Overcome. Overcome, yeah. yeah. We've overcome. And it, Take, taking on that that monthly payment of the store, you quitting so your scary. your job. <laughs> it was so scary. Uh, yeah. But, you know, the baby steps were worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Baby steps. Sleepless nights. <laughs> there um, were there were a lot of nights when we would be there till four in the morning doing like a reset. So and we didn't know because we didn't have windows. We didn't have we windows. Didn't, we we didn't just, know it was we late. We would be playing music <laughs> and just you know in the mode 
drinking energy drinks to try to stay awake and uh, which is probably horrible it was, yeah probably not too good but we'd be there till like four in the morning and we'd look at each other and be like wow we need to be back here in a few hours like we should probably try to get some sleep but uh we look back now and we're able to have a little bit more rest and a little bit more time because we spent that time putting in you know blood sweat and tears to try to get that place to where we needed it to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope some of you found this video interesting, uh, especially those of you who are entrepreneurs yourselves. If you have any questions for us, we're not experts at all, but we're definitely on the same page as some of you. We're starting from nothing and growing and learning along the way. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, please drop them below. We'll do our best to get back to all of you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Find us on Instagram and Facebook at Westby Handmade for more. Thanks.